Stanley Park is North America's third largest park. It attracts about 8 million visitors per year. The park includes an aquarium, nature center, and other recreational facilities. Much of the park remains forested and there are approximately 200 kilometers of trails and roads in the park that pedestrians, cyclists, and inline skaters enjoy year-round. Phylum Nidaria includes sea anemones and jellyfish. There are many different kinds of these organisms found on the shores of British Columbia. Sea anemones are a group of water-dwelling, predatory animals. They are polyps attached at the bottom to the surface beneath them. Unlike other cnidarians, anemones do not experience the free-swimming jellyfish stage. These are strawberry anemones. They are commonly found in water deeper than 10 feet and may carpet the bottom of some areas. This is a giant plumice anemone. As you can see, anemones come in all shapes, sizes, and colors. These are known as fish-eating anemones, and they stay true to their name for the most part. The fish-eating anemone has a great relationship with one small fish called the painted greenlet. This type of fish will sometimes lie in fish-eating anemones and use it for protection. As for other fish, stay clear of this anemone. These are giant green anemones. They can range in size and can also be very green depending on their habitat. They are easily mistaken for plants or flowers, but they're actually animals. This type of anemone has a symbiotic relationship with an algae living in its tissues. When the anemone lives under strong sunlight, the algae is encouraged to grow and the sea anemone gets very green. When the anemone lives in more shaded environments, the algae growth is inhibited. In this case, the anemone is less colorful and sometimes almost white. Sea anemones have nidocytes, or stinging cells, found on their tentacles that are used for defense and eating. When a tentacle is touched, it mechanically triggers the cell to attach to the organism that touched it, and a dose of poison is injected into the flesh of the aggressor or prey. Sea anemones feed by paralyzing their prey and pulling it into the gastrovascular cavity. The mouth is in the middle of the oral disc surrounded by tentacles. As you can see, tentacles will stick to whatever touches them, like a human finger. This sea anemone thinks it's going to be eating something, and therefore it is pulling its tentacles inside in order to digest its food. This movement is called peristalsis. This particular sea anemone is not harmful to humans, therefore we are able to touch it. These are white spotted jellyfish. The venom produced by these jellyfish is mild and is not considered a threat to humans. However, their ability to consume plankton and the eggs and larvae of important fish species is a concern. This is a fried egg jellyfish. It mostly feeds on other small jellyfish and zooplankton that become ensnared in its tentacles. Because the sting of this jellyfish is not very strong, small crustaceans will attach to it and even steal food from it if they get the chance. These are moon jellyfish. Like other jellies, they feed by collecting their food with their tentacles and bringing their prey into their body for digestion. They feed on mollusks, fish eggs, crustaceans, and many other small organisms. These jellies have limited motion, and like many other jellies, they primarily drift with the current. These are moon jelly eggs, the first stage in a moon jelly's life cycle. The next stage is ephyrae.
These are moon jelly young. They're almost full grown at this point in their lives. As you saw before, these are the fully grown moon jellies.